everyone for joining us. Um, so, Jan, if you don't mind muting your uh, microphone. Um, sure. But right off the bat, I'll introduce everyone to Sujan Islam. Uh, Sujan is a senior business analyst out of our Toronto office, uh, Click Data, and um, is actually going to show us a, a real life demo of how we do opinion mining uh, and sentiment analysis using Click Data. But before that, I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me okay. Uh, the webinar is recorded, so you will be able to see this after the webinar in the next 24 hours. It will be posted on our um, website under the support section webinar. And um, again, if you have any questions, just please tweet them or just ask them. It is a moderated chat, and I'll be on the lookout for any questions, especially when Sajan is, is, uh, is actually demoing a little bit more in detail and explaining. It'll actually be a different format than other uh, potentially other uh, webinars that you've attended, where it's going to be more of an interaction between me and Sajan, uh, talking a little bit about, uh, about how, what he's doing and how he's doing it. Um, but before that, and while we wait for other people to settle in and, and come in on board on the uh, onto the webinar, I just want to talk a little bit about Click Data and who we are. In case uh, you are somebody just joining us and you don't know who Click Data is. Uh, Click Data is a, is a BI and data management platform. And what we do is we're able to connect uh, data from a lot of different uh, places uh, into a data warehouse that we, su we uh, supply to you. Uh, we give you a lot of data management tools as well to basically work with, with the data. Uh, we provide a data visualization dashboard editor and soon report module editor. And we also allow collaboration and sharing directly within Click Data. So basically, it does everything that you see here on all these tools that you have to buy separately and configure separately. We do all that in one uh, go, in one simple to use platform. Um, the ultimate purpose of our platform, obviously, is to produce KPIs, uh, dashboards with, with charts and, uh, and uh, alerts and so forth. Um, and you can, you can definitely build all kinds of different styles and charts of, of, uh, of dashboards. And as I mentioned before, reports as well. Um, this is a new module coming out in early 2022 where you'll be able to have multi-page PDF reports. And as well, uh, these dashboards can be embedded and distributed and published to either by, by email or by phone, a mobile app uh, free to use from the app stores, Android and, and uh, iPhone uh, that you can use. So very short introduction, more shorter than uh, usual. Um, but, you know, I invite you to go to www.clickdata.com to find out more about us if you haven't heard about uh, Click Data. Um, and without further ado, I want to get right into the topic, a topic that's actually quite uh, of kind of a little bit of an interest uh, to myself and to Sujan. We've been working on this for a couple of um, a months now. And we even have a blog, a two-part blog out there. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more, and getting a step, a more detailed step by step. We also have a blog out there that uh, could be interesting for you to to uh, to follow. Um, and again, if you have any questions, if you are on a trial of Click Data or uh, you uh, you wish to trial uh, Click Data and you have some questions, please feel free to use the support uh, tickets to ask questions about this. But um, getting into data mining, sentiment or opinion analysis is really a data mining technique. It's basically the ability to to try to understand the feeling, positive or negative or neutral, um, about a certain a certain subject, a certain a certain um, term, or or object, or service, or product, and so forth. Um, it it is a branch of machine learning. It is one of the branch of machine learning, and it has uh, machine learning has several branches, if you will. Um, of advanced statistics analysis and data analysis. Two of them, which one is called natural language processing, which is basically the ability to process um, and uh, language in its natural format, in a written format or, or verbal as well, uh, then transcribed into, um, into text. And also natural language understanding, which is slightly different than processing. One thing is processing the, the rules of grammar and rules of, of, uh, of each language and the symbols of letters and so forth. The other one is actually understanding what the, uh, you know, the context is and the subject and the topic. So those two branches is, are things that are very important for us to understand. Um, and, and, you know, and they are very advanced topics in the sense that 
um, there are many different types of algorithms and optimizations to make sure that you know they work properly depending on the language, depending on the context, even within the same language that um, different regions of the language are understood. Where is that used? Um, sorry. Uh, where is that used? Well, that's used in Brand Insights. Uh, it, it, sorry, are you uh, trying to share your screen? Yep, don't. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Um, it is used in Brand Insights, Reputation Management, Ticket Triaging, Competitive Analysis, um, Customer Employee Voice Feedbacks, product service feedback, et cetera. So anywhere basically that you are able to collect any type of text based um, or, or as I said before, you could even have uh, audio recorded into and transcribed into text. But uh, at this point in time, we're, we're dealing with text data uh, that basically you have any, any uh, text, uh, written text from a, a human being that you would like to understand, um, you know, what is the overall sentiment, but what is the individual sentiment about each item that is said? Um, and that, you know, can be used in this and potentially other areas as well, uh, that you may have an idea of what you, you, you want to do. But um, basically, there's a lot of applications of natural language understanding and processing. Um, the challenges of it is are, are quite large and, and hence why uh, we utilize, uh, and you're going to see that next, why we utilize APIs that have been uh, improved by the masses, uh, the likes of Google and Amazon, uh, because they have been more and more accurate uh, than, than anything that we could potentially build in-house, et cetera, or that um, our customers can build as well. So, you know, here's, here's a simple sentence where it's a review. The food was great. Awesome location, but the service was slow. And again, uh, the overall sentiment of this uh, of this phrase can be taken as positive or negative. Uh, there's definitely three items here, three topics: food, location, and service. Um, and the uh, the opinion of this person writing this 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 uh, review or this comment um, can be seen as positive or negative, or potentially neutral. Uh, there, there will be a third option. And again, these are uh, these are things that you can configure and say what is positive or what is negative, or uh, at which level do we think something is negative or positive. So then you can also make your rules as to the overall sentiment to say, well, does two positives and one negative make it a positive? Or is it the fact that food and location is more important or it weighs more than service? Um, or potentially you would have said, no, this is negative because to me service uh, it goes right up there with food location. I have no control, but service you would have control. So maybe you would turn this into a negative rather than a positive, or at the very uh, least a, a neutral um, to make sure that there's room for improvement as opposed to marking as a positive. So all these rules of weighing each each topic and opinion, um, you know, that will come into uh, click data as a weighted uh, average or function. Uh, for for each one of these, but the challenges, you know, in a simple sentence like that, are not quite apparent. Um, the first one is obviously language. Um, it, if we are to offer this as a basis for our customers, uh, Click Data, we serve in over fifty countries. We definitely want to offer this uh, service in as many languages as possible. So, language is definitely one. But it does not end there. The the um, the intricacies of of language, of tone, idioms, the context, polarity, um, and and also polarity, which is basically the inherited um, meanings of words that uh, not necessarily like slang or idioms, but uh, inherent idioms uh, that basically can distort the 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 algorithm completely. And of course, bias. Right. I mean. We don't know who these reviewers of these restaurants or these hotels or or your product or your service or your company are. So they may be competitors, um, which you know their main interest is to uh, obviously give you negative comments, and we see that constantly uh, in you know in Google and and uh, in Amazon product reviews and so forth, where we wonder whether these are real users or per or buyers of the product. So a lot of challenges in in determining 
this and, and there's potentially a lot of rules. It's not enough just to feed these through the machine and then just, oh, okay, it's a negative or positive. There, there has to be some assessment additionally to, to what the algorithm is pushing through. Uh, to take a look at the process, what is the, the process? Well, the first piece is obviously collecting the information, uh, the data in some, some sort of uh, connector. Um, again, with click data, that's usually not an issue. We have lots of different connectors and web service APIs that allow you to bring all that data, this textual data, into click data. Uh, one thing that is optional, if, if you know that there's multiple languages involved, uh, then you know you may want to do a language detection on each of the uh, uh, of the phrases or the sentences to determine their language. And there's an API for that. Um, and then there's a text preparation piece. And the text preparation piece is making sure that um, you know you remove uh, certain things such as such as emojis and things like that, or potentially not. Again, you could you could uh, create formulas to take emojis into account, the happy or smiley face or, or not, um, uh, remove any kind of uh, symbols uh, and, uh, and other things that may slow down or, or otherwise affect your sentiment detection, which is the next step. And this is the thing that you, the, the portion of the process where you send it through the algorithm, uh, where it breaks up all your sentences into topics and objects, and it returns back a sentiment classification. And the final piece is uh, presenting those results and, again, applying potentially additional rules to weigh certain opinions higher than others and, the, and create the overall sentiment. So this is, seems simple, and it is simple for the most part, um, but it's important that you understand the, the whole process. To make this really effective within your business, it is also important that this is um, a recurring process, that this is not a one-off. So you'd want to automate this so that every month, uh, new comments, new feedback, new support tickets, whatever text you're getting, uh, you go through this consistently to see if you're moving the peg and, 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 and um, improving uh, basically uh, whatever you're trying to detect, whether it's your service, your product, uh, your company, et cetera. I touched on this briefly before. Um, and you know we talked about IBM Watson, Google Cloud Natural Language, uh, Amazon Comprehend, there's a lot of other ones. These are not limited to these guys here. Um, we uh, are uh, Microsoft Azure Habit users. Uh, our entire platform runs on Azure across all our data centers across the world. Uh, and Azure Cognitive Service is actually one of the best that we've seen. We're not saying this because we are on Azure, but indeed it, there is, there is um, um, a huge advantage and, uh, and already uh, a, a lot of things there built in that we're going to kind of hook up with click data. And I'll show you that in, in the next screen. But um, again, you are free on this example with, with Sijan do, to replace the Azure Cognitive Services portion of it with another one, uh, another API that you may have that you prefer or that you have an account with, okay? So it's no, we're not stuck with that. Um, just wanted to you to know that uh, in advance. What is important to know is that this module that you're going to see Sijan working, uh, which going, is going to um, involve pushing data out to Azure Cognitive Services, getting data back in, and doing a lot of pre-processing to make sure the, 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 that we talk to Azure Cognitive Services, that is all going to be built in in one little module on the data flow uh, module. In fact, it's going to be very dead easy where you're just going to say, okay, where's where's the column of data that contains my 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 sentence, my phrase, my content, and give me a unique identifier. And we're going to do all this work that Jen uh, is doing now for us in this demo automatically for you. And this functionality is going to be available um, uh, for business and enterprise tiers. And more info on that, uh, if you're interested in this feature or beta testing this feature, as always, please send me a direct email at telmo.silva at clickdata.com. You will see the email address as well for support at the end of this webinar. Um, the, uh, the last piece here is, again, uh, we will include language detection as well, uh, because as I mentioned before, uh, we have customers in many different countries. So we will try to include as many languages as possible on day one. With that said, 
Um, I want to pass this over to Sijan Islam and basically for him to go through uh, this demo. Uh, you are free to ask any questions. Like I said, this is moderated, but I'm keeping an eye on my moderation window. Um, and I will be asking some questions of Sijan as we go along as well. Um, if I don't understand something, I'll probably interrupt him. So over to you, Sijan. Uh, thank you, Tilmo. Uh, hello, everybody. So today I'm going to share a dashboard with you that we have worked on recently where we used re reviews from Yelp for a particular restaurant to do some sentiment analysis. So, um, so, we, so we will start with a list of reviews. So I have already uploaded it to Click Data. So let's take a look at it quickly. Okay. Uh, so this is the list of reviews. So it ha we have about 646 reviews over here. So as you know, um, there's not a lot of people as a percentage of customers that tend to submit reviews for restaurants, but those that do tend to be more invested or feel more strongly about the restaurant, the experience they had or, or the food they had. So because of that, I feel like this, uh, the reviews is a very rich source of insight if you're a business owner. Um, for example, you would want to know whether um, a customer will recommend your restaurant or whether there are some meal items that really work for you or even um, areas of improvement where you can improve your uh, your your service so, so this is and sorry sorry to interrupt so Jen, it's, it's funny because i see i've been trying to read the line to make sure it's readable for for the viewers but i see on row 15 right there and and i'm very curious how this is is going to be translated because it talks about fried chicken and waffles don't eat anything mm -hmm. else um now if you think about that sentence by itself you think okay don't is a negative word uh but he's basically saying or she is saying you know this is this is the best right and then down the line it just says i hate waiting in line stop showing up which also are very negative words in the sense of i hate and stop and so i'm very curious um, you know, I, I will try to look for this later on, but mm -hmm. this goes to show you the challenges of understanding the meaning of the people. Are they being negative after all, or in this case, being sarcastic and saying, stop showing up. I hate waiting in line, meaning I really like this place. I want to get there faster. So very interesting choice of, of data that you, you've picked here. Thank you. Okay. So, um, we are going to start with this data. And we have to, uh, as Telma mentioned, we have to send it over to the API so that it can do the sentiment analysis. But before we do that, we have to look up, uh, we have to look up the API documentation to see what kind of structure do they want to send us the data in. So uh, we are going to move over to that screen. So this is the API documentation for Azure uh, uh, Cognitive Services. And under sentiment, uh, we will take a look at the request body, okay? So as you can see, you have a, this is a JSON structure and it has a main node called documents. And under this node, there is a sub node which has three elements, uh, ID, language, and text. So text here would be our, each of the reviews that we will be sending. So if you notice, language is set to EN. So as uh, Telmo mentioned, uh, this, this API also lets us submit a, another request so if we were to have a review with different languages, we can send this uh, to a request and this will give us the language that it is in. So we will automatically get the language codes for them and we can use it for this request. But since this review are all, we know that all of the reviews are in English, we're going to go ahead and use language EN. So um, how do we add more reviews to it? So uh, this is what it would look at this, uh, this is uh, what it would look like when what we're sending to the API. So under documents, you have um, different uh, reviews. So you have say one, two, three, four, and so on. And one other, uh, and let's take a look at the response. Okay, so the response we'll be getting is again, it has a main documents note and it has a confidence score of negative, neutral, and positive for overall the overall documents, and it has a uh, sentiment score for each of the documents. So if you notice that ID one, it has a positive, 
uh, has a positive uh, sentiment. And within this uh, document, you have targets, which is which is what Talmud referred to as topics. All right. So let, let me just see if I recap and I, if I understand mm -hmm. this correctly. So um, we are basically sending, um, and I believe, I'm not sure if you talked about this, but I think there is a 10 document limit each time we call yes. the API. Right. right. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get, get into, into that, that later. Uh -huh. But yeah. basically, you're going to send 10 documents maximum each call, and right. it's going to return this response. Uh, for each document, the overall response, and then what they call their um, terms, is it? Or um, what do they call the, the the return at the bottom, if you scroll down? Response. Yes, yeah, targets. I'm sorry, targets. 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 What they targets. call targets is the individual topic that, you know, it's good or bad, right? So if mm -hmm. we're looking at the food review, the food is great, the service is, is another target, and the location is another target, right? So there's three right. targets there. Okay, gotcha. Right. So as Telmo mentioned, we're, um, this particular API has a hard limit of sending 10 of these texts per call. So when we uh, craft the res, uh, re request, we, we can only send 10 texts at a time, but this is not a hindrance for us if we want to send 646 reviews because using click data, you can make multiple calls and be able to uh, have the, uh, the all, all of the reviews analyzed with a couple of clicks. Okay, so what we are looking to send will look something like this. So you have one through, uh, you have uh, reviews one through 10 for this call. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a view of this input text. Um, let me open it, just bear with me. Okay, here we are. So we went ahead and um, uh, added some transformations, but I'm going to turn these off and just uh, go through each of them so that you can see what's happening. So first of all, uh, we need to get rid of some characters from the list of texts because they might cause problems when we are converting them to a JSON structure down the line. So this may include back and forward slashes, parentheses, curly braces, square brackets, uh, quotation marks, etc. And uh, so we have went, so I went ahead and removed them from the text. And then we can add the JSON element, uh, syntax to each of the reviews. So first of all, what I did here is I added curly, uh, I enclosed each of these reviews in curly braces and added the language and ID elements and put the review under a text element. So this, uh, we have fixed, uh, fixed the uh, JSON structure for each review. So that is where the limit of 10 documents per call come in. So how do we address this? So what we want, to, so what I want to do here is I want to structure this view such that each of these rows will represent a call. And in each of those rows, uh, we will have 10 documents listed. Okay, so what we did for that is I have added two IDs, okay? And we are assigning, so I'm assigning one call ID for every 10 reviews. And then there's another ID which numbers the reviews from one through 10 for each call ID. And we are pivoting that column so that we have 10, uh, a call ID, which would be unique for every row and 10 columns. Sorry to interrupt you again, but if you don't mind disabling this transformation and showing us the previous transformation, I think if you scroll down, because we see one to nine, mm -hmm. but then we don't see that it goes back and, and starts counting one again. So yes, this yes. is You're basically doing some kind of a modulus, uh, just saying one, two, three, all the way to 10, then goes back Correct. one, two, three, 10, and one, two, three. So basically this is how, now, how you know which ones are gonna go in on the same line, right? On the same row. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, now we have 10, 10 columns for each of these reviews. So the last step is to simply concatenate them. So what we have done here, we concatenated uh, all 10 reviews on uh, on each row, and we have enclosed it with a doc within a document um, a node, and we have completed the JSON structure. So now each row 
represent, uh, as I said, each row will now represent a call that is going out to the API. Okay. So now we are ready to uh, set up the web service to use the uh, uh, Azure API. So, so we're going to go, go ahead, ahead and put. And put. So this 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 was kind of what a surprise for me because I usually think of our web service connector as go get data like mm -hmm. brand new data, but in this case, what you're actually doing is sending data to to the Azure Cognitive Services API, Correct. and then you're getting data, of course. So there's there's some return of data, but mm -hmm. you're actually using it initially to post or send data to to them first, right? Exactly. That's why we are using the post method to send some data and get some data back from them. Okay. So now we have, so we have to go to the endpoint and uh, we, uh, as we discussed, we have to set the post, we have to set the method to post and we are going to add endpoints. So they, again, we have to refer to the API documentation so you, as you can see on the screen under sentiment, this is uh, this is the endpoint we are looking to use, uh, and that's and we pasted it for to the endpoint field here, and also notice we have added a parameter along with this endpoint called opinion mining equals true. So what this does is it's going uh, the the re uh, response will also include sentiments for each topics in addition to each reviews. Okay, so let's go to the request body since it's a post method. So this is where we are going to uh, put in the the uh, the the list of reviews that we have prepared in the previous step in the view. So what we have done here is we have put this. So this part is the is the part referencing the view where we have prepared the data, and what it's going to do is it's going to uh, send each call to the API. And for to do that, we to to send multiple calls, we have set up a pagination uh, for this uh, for this request. So we have defined a parameter called page. And if you go back to the formula, it's going to go through all. Uh, it's going to start from one and in, uh, increment by the, the page variable by it will increment by one until it reaches the end of the uh, end of the view where we have uh, set up the number of calls. Mm, okay. So, so just again to clarify, am I always trying to make sure I understand? Because you have basically ten repeated rows, right? Um, mm -hmm. And and now you've kind of have ten, you've aggregated ten, uh, uh, you know, feedback, uh, restaurant reviews, on one row. All okay. you want to do is now make not six hundred fifty calls, however mm -hmm. many calls you have, but instead you're going to make six sixty five. Correct. Calls, right? Uh, 10 mm -hmm. at a time, right? And this right. is why, why you're using pagination because mm -hmm. you don't want to. Okay, understood. Correct. Now we can go to the test tab and see if uh, the request is proper. And it seems like it's, um, it's a proper request. Now let's take a look at the response. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the JSON structure of the response. So this, we can do this on the note under the note tab. So as you can see, you have uh, documents. So this refers to each review. And each document has a corresponding confidence score where we are getting the sentiment. But also notice under documents, you have sentences, which are which represents the sentences within each review. And they have their own uh, confidence scores. And within that, there are targets, which are, which are the topics. And that's what we want to see. Uh, and the confidence scores will give us the sentiment for those targets. So this is the node we are selecting since we want to see the uh, sentiment for the review and the targets. Okay, and we are here, and here we need to copy the parent fields and the substructure so that we have uh, we have everything we need. Okay, so now we can take a look at what the data looks like. So as you can see, you have. Uh, um, you have sentiment for each document. Uh, if you notice, the first one it's being repeated by for four call for four rows, because this particular review has four items under it. So they each have a sentiment 
uh, they each have a sentiment as well. So you can get that from the confidence scores. Okay. So again, to, to be sure then, then I, I noticed there on the first column there that mm -hmm. the first uh, two documents, one and two, have mm -hmm. four rows each. That means they have four topics. So correct, either correct. The, the, the food item or the place or location. But I see number three there is got quite a few more. So right, right. can you just scroll to the right and see what how many things this person wrote down um, mm -hmm. to see sure. a little bit of what what they're talking about? Yeah, there we are. So this is, these are the items that has been identified by the API. So as you can see, uh, it has it has a number of things is like chicken, uh, meat, menu selection, etc. And they each have their confidence scores for positive and negative. So for example, uh, for positive, uh, um, seems like the menu is uh, positive, so got a positive score, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, does that make sense? This is actually interesting because in the same sentence, what this means is that I see fries there multiple times. So mm -hmm. in the same sentence, this person must really love fries and, and just keep talking about it. And, talking <laughs> about it. and he talked about meat, but then he talks about white meat, and then he talks about you know uh, other type of meat potentially. Um, so it's interesting that you're, you're, you know, on one side he's saying, you know, something. So this could be interesting for further analysis because what happens if you get fries, you know, positive is one, 100 percent positive. Uh, right. And then, uh, you know, down the line, you say fries and you have a completely negative comment. How do you handle those things? Those are business rules that you need to, you know, now that you have it broken down, you need to potentially apply additional rules. To right. kind of, uh, come out with those, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, this would depend on business rules. Like if it if it was across a different domain, uh, for example, in the customer service, you would probably apply a different set of rules how, uh, as to how you want to interpret the data, right? Right. right. Okay, so we're. I think we are ready. We'll go ahead and generate this. Uh, uh, get the re response from the API. And now uh, we can take a look at the response. So this is the response. So as I showed you, it ha it should have all the columns. So let's uh, so you, we want we would want to take a look at this to do a little sanity check. So, for example, if you look at um, row six, seven, and eight, it has the document ID of twenty four. So it's referring to the same review. So if you read the review. It goes like the food was incredible of the decor sitting at the counter and watching it. The cooks was fun. So it seems like there are three items, food, decor, and possibly cooks. And it's being, uh, so if we go all the way to the right, you can see it, the API did detect uh, three topics from this review. Uh, the review call uh, that are food, decor, and cooks, and it seems like they're all positive. So that kind of goes with the sort of the when you're eyeballing the reviews, that should get that sort of is expected. So I think uh, we can, I think the data is ready for us to create a dashboard from it uh, because we are already kind of can gauge what is the overall sentiment of the restaurant plus what is the. Uh, or what is the sentiment of each of those items? So uh, if you want to do additional analysis, uh, you can add uh, additional transformation to this data to maybe do an aggregation of how many items there are, uh, the frequency of items that shows up on the, uh, on, uh, on the reviews and sort of do a tabulation of how many are positive and how many are negative. You could do these kind of additional transformation, but we are going to go right ahead and show you the dashboard we have created from it. Okay, so this is the dashboard we created. So if you look at the top left, you can see the overall sentiment of the restaurant. It looks like it's mostly mixed, but the positive reviews far outnumber the negative. And we can look into why it's mostly uh, mixed. We could possibly look at the towards the right of this dashboard, uh, which lists the most positively rated items and the most negatively rated items. 
So you can uh, so it shows us a very clear picture of what kind of what, what kind of things the restaurant is doing right and what kind of things it could improve on. So if you, what's interesting is uh, if you notice under the top positive items, it's mostly referring to uh, a lot of the menu items, but the negative items is referring mostly to the other kind of experiences other than the food, for example, seating, location, space, customer service, etc. cetera. Um, okay. And uh, we have a word cloud in the middle that kind of shows you the frequency of these topics that, uh, that shows up on the review or what people has been talking about. So if you look at one of them, fried chicken seems to be very frequent in these reviews. So let's t we, if we click on it, we can see like uh, the sentiment uh, for just fried chicken. It's, and it seemed to be around 80%. Uh, likewise for burger, let's take a look. It's around 75 and uh, and if we look at in one of the negative ones, so for example, if we want to look at rest, um, cus, um, restaurant, right at the bottom. I yeah. See right at okay. The bottom. Thank you. Okay, so that seemed to have a very negative response, but uh, I would put this down to possibly um, it's just the fact that people where uh, reviews that tend to mention restaurant were negative. Yeah. But if you look at um, other the, some of the other items, they are very positive. So you can take a so based on the business you're in, you can take away a you can reach a conclusion based on the data you're seeing. But it looks like uh, it paints a pretty good picture of where this restaurant is at. Yeah, it's quite interesting as well, and, and I'm not sure why this is happening, but uh, I see, for example, burger and burgers. I see mm -hmm. fried chicken and chicken, um, and, you know, it's there may be, you know, this is what we were discussing before, you know, under mixed, there's that's a huge amount of mixed reviews there, or at least mixed, um, uh, almost not identified opinions in a sense. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's you know it could sway easily if if two hundred of them are negative. In mm -hmm. fact, if after you do a bit of more cleansing and potentially more deep analysis, uh, it may sway this restaurant to be a completely negative experience overall. In fact, right? Possibly. But if, but if two hundred of those are positive, then it just reinforces again the positive side of things, right? So it just goes to show you that this can get you so far, but you know again. That there's you know additional things once you have a dashboard like this you need to go well I, I'm gonna need to do some additional data kind of merging and cleansing to make sure that I'm actually getting and also you know we also talked about you know yesterday Sajan about you know just thinking that everything above fifty percent or is positive right or negative yeah. is maybe too too simplistic right. And we talked specifically about net promoter score, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you had some ideas there on how potentially, you know, we could sway a little bit and be a bit more strict on those and just say, well, you know, maybe only things above 70% or 80% are actually considered an opinion and really positive, right? Correct. Absolutely. You can ca sort of adjust the data um, based on the domain we are, you're uh, based on the domain or the industry you're working on. If you if it's a much more uh, kind of a negative uh, strict, uh, if you enforce strict rules as to what is positive and negative. I mean, since we were seeing confidence scores, you can sort of calibrate it such that uh, if say if it's over if the if it's ninety percent over ninety percent positive confidence score, it, you can assign it a positive, and on the other says um, and like this for negative. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, you know this this was really good, and and thank you very much for that, uh, Sajan. You're welcome. Um, you know, I uh, the floor is open for for questions. Um, We'll use our own opinion mining of the uh, of the questions, uh, but if you do have any questions, this would be a great time. Um, and if not, you know, I urge you if you're really interested in 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 this in this topic, that um, you know you contact us and maybe we can we can do a more detailed demo with you. Or like I said, we have some blogs. Uh, the webinar will also be posted on our support page. Um, so looking forward to your feedback on this. 
Um, so if there's no other questions, and I don't think I see any, uh, thank you very much for watching. So Jan, thank you very much. Thanks for no the preparation. Problem. Thanks for no the demo problem. as well. Uh, thanks to everybody that attended. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy. You too. Bye-bye. Uh